Hi, I'm Monique Boonstra on social media, also known as Passion for Lace. And this is my video on how to help you getting the knit to knit the Shetland Star Square or Rectangle. Um, for some of you, it might be helpful because I uh, will tell you lots of tips and tricks. And um, if you already know them, well, okay, that's great. Um, Maybe you'll pick up something small in the past of this video. I don't know how long it will take. It takes as long as it takes, just like knitting. Um, the Shetland Star Square is a very large shawl. It now comes in two sizes, in six feet square and 53 inches square. In, in Dutch and in Europe, that means 180 centimeters square or about 135 centimeters square, approximately. Not sure yet. And we're talking about this one. It's a very large shawl knit in sh fine Shetland wool from Jameson and Smith. And it's a lot of shawl, but that's good because it's nice. It's thin. Um, this version can't be pulled through a wedding ring because the yarn isn't quite fine enough, but it's still very shiny. You can see reasonably through it. It's wool, so that's good. It stretches a bit and it's very warm to wear. I did wear it once. Okay. Um, but for this video, I will uh, show you uh, most often the swatch I made because this is more acceptable in size. And I can point out things like the edge, the border, and here the center pattern. Okay. In this video also, <coughs> excuse me, I will tell you about the swatch. Hold on. about stitches, techniques, working order, forms, shapes, and uh, putting it all together in the end. <clears throat> Let's get started. Um, there are some people who like to have written rows in a pattern, but for Shetland st uh, stars and Shetland lace in general, it's almost not uh, possible to do that, except maybe for the center. <clears throat> Excuse me again. It's not going very well. Um, there are uh, a couple of types of stitches because uh, there are no pearl rows in Shetland lace. So we have the knit stitch. We have a pearl stitch. We have an increase, a yarn over. We have a center double decrease. We have, in this case, <laughs> A left leaning decrease <coughs> and a right leaning decrease and in some cases I've made it a habit to have a slip stitch also yeah it's in mirror I'm sorry um, but uh, usually there's only at the beginning of the row to make sure you have a nice uh, corner stitch or uh, edge stitch to pick up later to attach the other parts to. Okay, um, the thing is, um, you first need good needles and uh, very fine yarn because it's already very large. And if you increase the yarn size, your shawl will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you want a blanket, that's okay. But we're aiming here for fine lace. So anything uh, 1200 meters uh, per 100 grams and up is going uh, to be just fine. I know it can be very scary because the yarn is very thin. And um, just for instance, this thin. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, it's very uh, fine. It's wool. So, and it's a one ply. So that's very delicate. And um, I'm here to help you navigating the yarn and, and the stitches so you can knit the shawl without any troubles. Um, swatching is very important because you can get yourself uh, acquainted with the pattern and you can try your hand because some people have found with the Minogame shawl in the knit along by Irina that uh, after a while halfway down the shawl if they first started knitting Shetland lace that uh, the gauge became a bit looser and that may be because you are not familiar with the yarn and in the first few rows you're pulling on it a bit maybe like you used to and then in a consequential 
um, repeats, you're getting uh, more familiar with it and it gets a bit easier and then you relax and then your tension may be a bit uh, looser and then your uh, gauge is getting bigger. That's okay, it will probably all uh, block out in the end, but let me show you on uh, more information about swatching. I've done some swatching for you and in the pattern uh, files you can see that I have uh, published a few uh, photos of this sequence. These are swatches I made with different types of uh, yarn and different types of uh, needle size. And uh, let me show you, this one was made on 1.5 millimeter, this one was made with 2 millimeters, and this one was made with 2.5 millimeters. Then this one was made with Shetland wool with 1.5 millimeters, and this one was made with 2 millimeters, and this one with 2.5, and the final one was made with 3 millimeters. And as you can see, they're all different in size. And the thing is, this would be easy, but it's not very smart because the stitches are very loose and there's not a lot of context between them, so it's highly likely they will um, not disintegrate, but um, yeah, you, it's easier to snag uh, behind it. The smaller ones, it will take you longer to knit, but I think they're very beautiful. And um, this will make a fine fabric and the lace comes out still very well. I wouldn't go very much smaller. So um, personally, I would go with this one. This is two millimeters and it's an acceptable size. You still have the feeling that it's going along very well. And most important, when you have made a mistake, it's easier to pick it up. Also, when you made a mistake, um, there are lifelines you can use um, and uh, please use a finer needle to think back because then you can stick the needle into the stitches a bit easier and the stitches have already got their shape so it's okay and uh, they won't get any smaller unless you start continue knitting with the finer uh, needle. Okay, um, this is my program so I can advertise my own knitting. If you uh, have the swatch in the Shetland Star Support Group um, and you want a bit more before you start with uh, the big, big shawl. Uh, last year we had a knit along for the fine uh, lace snack. It's a little set of flags. You can uh, try your hand on different size um, patterns, smaller and bigger ones. And this is easy to do. It's uh, not very large. You can get familiar with the finer yarns and get familiar with the different stitch patterns. A fine lace snack available in my shop. Okay, next. We talked about the stitches, but the most important thing is the order of the stitches. So let me take the camera and flip around the view. Give you this. Okay. Um, when you have the pattern, it comes with charts. And charts are built up like this. There are little square boxes with a symbol in it, and each symbol uh, represents an action. For instance, this represents a decrease, this is a yarn over, this is a purl, a knit stitch, and a center double decrease over there. Okay, and um, in this case, um, let me start uh, with what I've laid out here. This is a stitch group. To be able to make this one, you need those two. And when you make a decrease to keep the same stitch amount, you need a yarn over. And that can yarn over can be over there, but let me show you. They don't necessarily have to be next to each other. There can be a single stitch in between them. So that can happen. The slip stitch, on this is on either side, but it could also just as well be over here. To make sure that edge stitch is perfect, so you can pick up the loop later to attach the edge. 
And now we have a very difficult stitch pattern here. Over here, it's the single decrease, double yarn over, single decrease in the one row. And then we have the enemy, the purl stitch on the return row in this case. Um, the double yarn over is uh, making a very large hole and is technically the basis of the star pattern. Let me show you over here. This is built up like this and this. Okay, so we have that clear. This and that one and that one and that one. So you better get used to it because there's a lot of them. And over here. See? Okay. Um, the weird thing is that usually these are even. These are uneven. And this group is also even and that means that sometimes when you have a chart and you get oh let me take it back again these holes are even but these patterns aren't so that can mean that in this cross in this and in this section there might be a single or there will be a single stitch um, to divide the yarn holes because this ladder is uneven and when you will match it with this one you always will will run one short or three too many so that's not an option so there will be a single stitch in between over here okay um when you see this in your chart and you want to read the chart, you usually read from right to left, and then you turn your work, and then you go from left to right. Okay. Um, in normal Shetland lace, in normal uh, lace knitting, where are my pearls? Here are my pearls. Um, in normal Shetland knitting, oh, in no <laughs> sorry to confuse you, in normal uh, lace knitting, there are pearl rows. Where's my pearl? Here's my pearl. Okay. So you start over here. You slip one. You knit three. And then you turn your work. And then you slip one again. And then you purl the previously knit stitches and then the end above the slip stitch you do another knit so the slip stitch will be okay that's all nice and fine but in shetland lace that's not an option because every row is knit so bye bye purl stitches we don't like you see ya okay we have this Oh, let me, where is it? Here. And then we do this over here. And we do... Um, <laughs> no, where is it? Here. Okay. So... This is, a, for example, a stitch pattern in the Shetland Stars. You have a center, double de a center decrease, a yarn over, and then above the yarn over is not a purl, but a knit stitch and a new lace pattern because you have room for it, so you can put in some lace. And that is the whole trick with Shetland lace. But the tricky part is that... Technically, when you start here and you knit over there and you turn your work and you go back, the yarn over will still be yarn over. Under the needle, over the needle, that's it. But this if you would look at it would have to be knit like that. That's the difficult part of Shetland lace. Because this needs to happen in your head. Because it's not in the pattern it shows in the pattern like this because the main direction is going that way and 
technically you have to knit this and now the most terrible thing is this can happen anywhere the thing is that when you have made this pattern hold on hold on um let me lose that one then we go over here ah darn here i'm trying not to make you seasick by wiggling the ink too much okay um this could be an uneven row and this could be an even row I don't have the time to put in all the symbols but let me show you like this I've got too many cards yeah this is a bit from the edge pattern I think or it could be anywhere so this is an even row this is an uneven row and this is an even row but what if this is an uneven row and this is an even row it is very confusing sometimes you need to take in consideration the shape and the direction of the pattern so this is the direction of the pattern and then it goes that way and when you turn your work you get a new front and you have to knit accordingly and keeping the shape in mind and keeping the overall pattern in mind because this is how you will see in a book but that doesn't mean that it starts in a right side row it can also uh, also start in a wrong side row the single thing is that the central double decrease will remain the same but this is just a single decrease either left leaning or right leaning and depending on the direction because where's my swatch where's my swatch oh here let's take a look over here these are single decreases and they also go in those directions Let us, uh, for instance this could be the front but because all rows are knit this could be the front also so it's very important to keep the main direction of the stitches in mind and whether it's on your needle like this or like this and your needle is over here you have to take in consideration the direction of the shape and then you can decide whether it's a left leaning or a right leaning decrease it these This will look like this on your chart and this will look like this on your chart and that will make sure that you keep the shape as you want it like this is a tight line straight line over here and over here under so you need to keep knitting these but technically it should be this because you turn your work and then you get a new shape okay i hope this helps because you need to get it in your mind to make it easier for yourself because like these for instance they can start in a right side row and this one can start in a wrong side row but the shape will still be the same 
and these will always start in one row and because they are only a two row pattern the return row is always the same um, the hexagons you see here going up and here it stays the same and going up and stays the same and here are the decreases with the center double decrease over here there's a lot happening okay now we got something different the shapes of the shawl on page two or three there's a diagram and it shows you something like this and the working order okay so these are the parts of the shawl first we start with number one the edge knitting direction up and down up and down so technically you would knit it like this where's my example oh here's my example this is the edge of a different shawl but it looks like this see somebody's in trouble sirens are going off that's not good okay so this is a close-up you cast on you knit back and forth back and forth back and forth these are the slip stitches oh it's upside down okay so these are the slip stitches this is the point and then you knit 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 until you have the acquired number of points okay so that's this bit it's knitted in that direction see then you pick up those tiny loops on your needle and the stitch direction is this 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 way so going that way but now we need to knit the border this one and you want to attach it at these stitches but the knitting direction of the border is going up so these stitches are going this way and these stitches are going that way okay so when you've knitted the border then it's the one thing that is easy on this shawl you can start straight away with the center because you have the required amount of stitches and it's good fit and you can straight up and the knitting direction is the same and now for the other halves other bits then you start with another border or another edge knit 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 yeah pick up the loops 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 okay and then attach the border and if you want you can do that with this one and this one too but what i did was i knitted the edge and the border and then immediately attached it to the center because the stitches on the border and the stitches on your center are live they are on the needle and they can be dropped so graft them together and then this bit is done and then you have all the time to knit another border and an of another edge and another border and this one i know it takes time and you might be quicker because you've already done it and that's your shawl okay so the hard parts are 
then you need to craft this and this and this and this these are still open because these need to be grafted and these need to be grafted and um i've had i have put in uh an example on how to graft and i've got a video on that on youtube here also i can't put in the link because i don't know how to do that but uh just check out my channel and you'll find it because I don't have many videos. So you'll find it very quickly. I made it last month. And um, the technique for grafting is not the same for this. I would recommend to have uh, a needle and thread and start here and going outwards. And I would recommend even more to first knit the shawl. Why doesn't it start? Um, so. Um, I would recommend to first wash and uh, dress the shawl to size and then during dressing or uh, blocking pin these towards each other and then uh, this and this one this this one because um, that way it won't be too tight if you sew this and it's too tight and you need to block it it might stretch in the middle outwards and over here and then this bit is very tight so you need to be very careful you can use a simple mattress stitch and then you can um, uh, you can even graft it during blocking that's what I did I just pin it to size and pin this down and when it's dry and when it's dry enough you can pull the yarn through and close those two Okay, what's more? Um, the shapes, the working order, techniques, swatches. Yeah, that's about it. I don't know what I can tell you for anymore. Um, let me take the real shawl and show you what I did with the grafting. I will sit on one part and pull on it a bit so you can see it better. See, it's quite uh, a long bit because it starts over, <laughs> let me check, um, over here, okay, it starts over here, and then it goes all the way over there, and let me check, I won't show the chart, but it's uh, approximately... 155 rows so that's quite a large step to do um, you need uh, the same yarn as you knitted it with and then you have to make sure that the yarn doesn't break because it's a one ply so you need to over twist it like with grafting and uh, so the these stitches are big enough so that when you do stretch it it's not too tight and it has the same size as the um, rest of the stitches what you can also do is um, especially for the corners because as you can see this doesn't match uh, just so well let me see if there's a different one that's better yay no also not anyway what you can also do is put the stitches of the borders on needles starting with the end on here and going inward so that your needle points are over here and then graft outwards um, see this is a perfect match whoop whoop just look at it um so that's uh, uh as you can see the this is the back I'm not sure if I can okay so that's pretty neat then you have to graft um, the border to the center but this is upside down, so I need to twist it again. Ta -ta -ta. Okay. Let's 
center, 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 graft. This is the break pattern. And because these are decreases, double decreases, and these are decreases, the pattern gets a bit pulled in this direction and in this direction. That is why it is a bit curvy. During blocking, it will be okay. It will be a straight line. See? You can block it in a straight line if you pull in all directions at the same time. And this is the graft with no break pattern on the sides. And... So there's uh, information on how to graft and how many stitches to graft this. And for the smaller square, it's a little bit different, I think. And as you can see here, this is my yarn end. I left it because during wearing, I don't wear it a lot. It will felt a bit and then that way it is not too tight and it will felt. Okay, I don't know what there's other things to tell. I do uh, recommend to uh, uh, the, um, the chart for the pattern. It's in um, pieces and you need to uh, glue them together. I will show you very briefly. Okay, that's it. Um, the bottom part is four parts. No, five. One, two, three, four, five. And there's a red line. So you can see what the repeat is. And I know that it's a very large chart. And on this one, I glued the top bit of the last 50 rows onto it again. Uh, so I can see if it matches and the pattern is correct. But uh, I know that it's a lot to have on your lap while knitting. And um, so I can recommend that you try to fold it or print at least the two pages with the center pattern. And once you want, because it's running in the other charts too, but it's too large to have it on one single uh, chart. So you need to have uh, a clear idea of how the pattern is built up. And I'm fully aware that not everybody is able to print it or to put it together because recently I got a comment that it didn't mention in my uh, design that you have to put the parts of the uh, chart together. And that was a big hurdle for her and I can fully see it because it's a large pattern. But as you can see, if you start writing out those rows, it's not very easy. And... Um, for me, writing out rows is very confusing. I get lost, I make mistakes, so that's not a good idea. I do recommend, if you can afford it, to buy uh, the knit uh, mas stitch mastery or uh, stitch fiddle or something like that that can help you with uh, the pattern. Uh, you can download it and convert it to their file, and then you the file will uh, read it for you or make written rows of it or something like that. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, the downside of that is that you, uh, that the pattern will say in, like I said, with the, the symbols that, uh, it could be that you need that the pattern says you need to need this one, but actually you have to need that one. So you have to make sure that that is, um, okay. Um, I do have to mention that it's a well-known fact that in the old days when Shetland Lace was starting, that the people, uh, the mostly women, there were a few men that were knitting the shawls, that um, did only the knit two together and not a directional decrease. But it also bears to mention, and that's often forgotten, that uh, the yarn was so fine that in the end you wouldn't see it. And this yarn isn't as fine, and sometimes you do see it. It's not for wearing, it's not important, but okay. Um, did I mention everything? Charts, working order. Well, um, finally, pro tips. I 
really don't care if you knit on circular needles, straight needles, carbon needles, bamboo needles. Uh, it is not my concern. It's not a golden rule. It's just make sure you knit with what you are most comfortable with. And uh, the only thing I ask is that you get a needle that has a reasonably, reasonably sized point. So you can make the decreases easier. And um, the yarn is very fine. So even if you have uh, 451 stitches on your needle, when you pull it all, like I did this on straight needles, it fits. Don't worry, it fits. Um, when you do it with bulky yarn or just a regular lace weight, I've seen someone that has uh, 800 meters per 100 gram yarn. That's fine too, but mm, maybe you need a bit longer needle. I work with uh, 24 inch, 40 centimeters needles. And um, when you have a circular needle, you can, it's not necessary to have a needle that's a one a yard long or even longer just mentally because you think all the stitches will have to go on it but you only need that bit so um the yarn yeah um color wise you can choose anything you want technically but let me show you um where's on it i don't have it here um when the yarn is too variegated it distracts from the lace um you have to work very hard for all these lace patterns but what is possible is that you uh, do color bands that you, for instance, you do the edge in one color and then in all lighter colors or darker colors going inwards. Um, for some people, it might be easier to have uh, a darker yarn on your needles. I use gray needles and um, I have not met, knitted very many gray shawls because when the needles are gray and the yarn is gray I don't see anything anymore I have this light oh this light over my shoulder so I can see what I'm doing because I mostly knit in the evening and um, I store it away in a, a box or in a bag like a Ziploc bag so that the cats can't get to it I'm not a smoker myself, but sometimes that's very, uh, you have to be, uh, yeah, I, my husband smokes and my children do, so um, at least the sons. And you have to be tricky because I don't want any burn holes in the yarn. Okay, then I have another small booklet and um, I wanted to show you something. Um, this is... Mm, let me. Oh, this is my hand spun Shetland wool on two and a half millimeters needles. Okay, and this is Hapsali yarn from Hay. Oh, Hay. I, I'm not sure on. Um, I didn't mention the needle size, but I guess it's two and a half millimeters too. And this is with the Phoenix. So you can see the sizes, but the thing is, this is with my hand spun yarn. And you can hardly see it, but it's in garter stitch. Because you know what happens with a hand spun yarn or a single ply yarn if you do it in stockinette. It skews. Because a single ply yarn is not built to have. Um, balance it's twisted in one direction and uh, when you knit in garter stitch like this one it will balance itself out in the next row but this is with pearl rows and you can see the ridges going vertically and i glued it on like this it's relaxed and blocked because this is what happens when you knit a uh, single ply yarn in stockinette. And that's not what we want. We want a nice thing that stays in shape. Okay. So that's important. Uh, you can also, of course, uh, the Phoenix is a two ply yarn. So 
that will balance itself out in every row no matter what and um Recently, I did the Lusna show, Lusna, and that was a, a three ply yarn, but it was even finer than the Gossamer Phoenix. So, there are many possibilities. My friend Monique Dreef has yarn, Colomart has yarn, Heirloom Knitting on Etsy has yarn, um, Uppingham has silk yarn on um, their UK website. Oh. Yeah. So there are many options. Uh, there is a list in the Shetland support group uh, that's not complete yet. I have to. I recently asked in the other group if people were aware of other suppliers, and I still have to refresh those lists. And um, is there anything more I can tell? Needles, yarn, color. Oh, dressing, of course. Um, when the shawl is done, it's one big hot mess. It's like a blob of lace and wool and um, you have to wash it. And the first time I did that, it took me three days to work up the courage. And um, then it turned out that I had color differences between the skeins. So I had to dye it. That took me also three days for the courage to do that, to put it in a hot pan with boiling water. But that was with silk content, so it was less worrisome about the shrinkage. But as long as you don't stir too much, it's okay. So when you have this finely grafted and, uh, uh, yeah, somewhat, and um, you have to put it in a, this needs a bucket. It doesn't need a bowl, it needs a bucket. And preferably one without any sharp edges or things that can snag on. And then you fill the bucket with uh, very warm water. Um, some people say they don't like to dress something or rinse something because um, they don't think it's necessary. For lace, please do. It's so worth it. It's where all the magic happens and all the hours and sweat and tears and curse words come out and um, there's also sometimes a little bit of grease on your hands or a sweat from oh, I'm doing it I'm doing it and that also gets in your yarn um, so you then gently put it in the bucket and it will take up the water and it will sink by itself and then you have to pr can press it down a bit and um, you can use the regular um, detergents like uh, soak or uh, anything for wool or um, I use uh, like Dreft or Fairy. It's a dishwash liquid. It's green. It's very soft. It doesn't smell because that's very important to me. It must not smell. I do like smells but from flowers not from my shawl. And um, then you leave it in. You stir it a little bit so the soap gets everywhere. And then uh, when you take it out because the draft you have to rinse, the soak you don't have to rinse. Um, and then please don't wring it, don't do this. Just leave it out and press like this. Press and then press and press. It's sheep hair, so you have to be careful with it. Um, then drop it in an empty bucket and uh, leave it out for like five minutes so the excess water drops down by gravity and then you can put it in a towel and take it to the blocking location. I do have a knitting uh, frame, uh, blocking frame dress thing, but this I did on my bed. We have a king size bed because I'm six feet two, so we do need a large bed and this is only six feet, so I had two, one inch on either side. Um, and um, Then let me show you in the, in, the, in the swatch. Where is my swatch? Swatch, swatch. Just imagine this is your shawl. Yeah, okay. Lay it out on a blocking location. Like this. Um, yeah, okay. Imagine this is your shawl. Um, try to lay it out as possible, uh, as large as you can, but then start at the points. Uh, do not pull on it because it's fragile. 
um, you need to, you can't pull on it because the edge will um, distribute the stretch of the of the pulling. Uh, what you can do is pull through the points of the edge uh, a wire from your ki uh, blocking kit, or you sometimes have uh, T pins, and then you can uh, pin one down, and then the second one and work from outside in so this one on the corners and then one in the center just approximately it doesn't have to be as tight as because then there is a lot of strain on the single one and then do quarters and then do fifths and eighths and then um, when you do one side also do the other side so you begin um, here 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 first corners and then these ones in these ones and then half C's and then half C's so the um, blocking is done in stages so you don't have to uh, allow all the stress on the corner and then you can always adjust just take a bit of distance and see and what I always do is take pictures because a picture is has a wide view and then you can uh, see oh this is a bit too wide then you pull it back and this is can have a little bit more and then I also have a large ruler that's like two and a half meters long and I lay it down and see what happens and then I can uh, see if it's straight and then you can always adjust um when you have washed it and pressed it in a towel don't press out until it's dry you need a little bit of dampness and um thanks to elizabeth williamson of uh, shetland knitting Ferral dinges i'm not sure she uh had a, a interview she was interviewed by someone and i watched it and she has a link in her uh, website and she said that um, shells need to be dressed for at least seven days. That was new to me. That was a big secret. Didn't tell that on the websites and, or in the classes I took on Shetland. So that was very educational. Um, I usually uh, do leave them out at least one uh, day, full day. I start in the morning and I go to bed at 2 a.m. And then is when I pull it off and store it nicely and neatly for the next day. Because I'm always up very late. And um, so, yeah, the thing is that back in the day when this is just me thinking out loud, um, when they uh, knit the shawls, it was very, very fine. I mean, this is bulky compared to what they spun. And um, when you leave it like this, that's okay. But the ladies in London and in the other parts of England where they were uh, wearing the shawls, because they were so proud and look at me I have a Shetland shawl the ladies in Shetland will never get it back so they need to be aware that this is like it's like sheep's hair like human hair and it needs to stay in shape and to, I think it's got to do something like with memory that when you dress it for a full seven days or five days or a long time then the connections will be set and it will stay stay in shape better that's what i assume i'm not sure so um i don't have the time the room and the place to dress this for seven days so um i've done it once when i finished it it was in 2016 july and that's eight years ago and mine is still in shape I've shown it a lot, I've traveled with it, I've worn it, I've wrapped it around myself doing, during the opening ceremony of the Shetland Wool Week 2016. Yeah, that's correct, because it didn't go in 18. Um, and um, it's still in shape, so I'm very fortunate. I'm not sure um, if I would uh, ever be able to hand spin one for myself and knit one and how it would behave. Uh, subsequently so um i think oh storage of course you need to store it okay um this one is stored um in a plastic box 
like I said, without uh, lavender or uh, those wooden things or um, anti-moth, I, I, I hate plastic. I, I don't want to, but it's the only way to keep it safe from moths because I had my the one in uh, the Love Dark shawl eaten by moths and I had to do repairs and it's not worth it. So uh, now I store it in a plastic bin that can be closed and I regular, regularly take it out and uh, change the folds because it's still uh, hair. And fiber and it, it it can't be pressed in a fold because in the end it will break and so um, yeah I take it out I, I check for extra holes and then um, store it again until I need it I sometimes give uh, talks for local women groups who are crafters and it's always a big winner because People are always surprised that such things can be handmade. And uh, so it's, it's taken out regularly. And um, then I store it back again in plastic box and look at it from uh, my bed. Because the closet where it's in is on the end of my bed. So this is it. I um, hope this was helpful. Many tips and tricks are in pattern like, for instance, which is not in a pattern is when you knit a row and uh, take out the yarn uh, for a yard or so and, and lay it out so the yarn uh, ball doesn't roll off the couch and um, you can knit the whole row in one go so you don't lose your place very very important hold on stitch markers stitch markers don't make them too big don't use those plastic clip-ons they're handy because you can take them out, but uh, please don't. Uh, the stitches, as you can see, even with comparing to my very large hands, are very small. And when you use a stitch marker that is too big, um, there will be a tiny extra length between the stitches to get around the stitch marker. And because the stitch marker is almost always on the same place, you get sort of a, a, a ridge or a, a wider gap that can't, that's very difficult to block out because it's there it needs to be distributed amongst the rest of the stitches and uh, one uh, repeat is 58 stitches in the border in the center it's smaller but um, yeah you don't want anything uh, for wearing it doesn't matter but please use a smaller stitch marker um, I don't want to overflow her but Rebecca's room on Etsy has uh, tiny rings the Gossamer web on Etsy has tiny rings and uh, you can use a piece of color thread to help with um, uh, being a stitch marker. Make a loop and a knot and you can put it in and get it out when necessary. Um, when you attach a life, when you attach, when you insert a lifeline, please don't uh, sew the stitch markers uh, in the lifeline because you can't get them out. Also, uh, when you uh, uh, insert a lifeline, um, I'm currently knitting with a gossamer yarn. It's on two millimeter needles, so that's not too bad. But I still do transfer the stitches to a smaller needle, then insert the lifeline or go along. I have a reel on Instagram on how I do that, so you can check that out. I'm a passion for lace on the Instagram too. And um, yeah, and then when it's all done, Mine took a year, so please, please don't be worried that it has to be quick. It doesn't. Just enjoy the process. And um, yeah, I did. I had great fun. It can be quite boring, but by the time you have done one border and then the center, this will be uh, a bit forgotten and it will be all new yet familiar. And then you'll be surprised at how quick the second and the third and the fourth one go. Um, yeah, and, and wear it somewhere. It will keep you warm. It can be a blanket. I wouldn't recommend it for a baby, even though the pattern is very fine. You don't want to throw it up, uh, the baby having thrown up on it. But it will keep them warm anyway. So that's it. That's my shawl. Hope you like it. Enjoy. And um, 
have a fine net. And when you run into trouble, don't hesitate to contact me on uh, Ravelry, Etsy, Facebook, Instagram, as a Passion for Lace or Monique Bay. And um, as I previously mentioned, I'm always up to 1 a.m., 2 a.m., oh, p uh, yeah, a.m., 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the evening. So even when you're on the other side of the world, you're still able to contact me and get a very quick response. I still have my day job as a postal worker, so please allow for some rest and uh, work. And um, I hope uh, this helps. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.